what is a, a phenotype? Yeah. Yeah. What is pheno refers to phenotype. It's really the physical expression of a plant's genetics. I think that's kind of the best way to explain it. So you could have a bunch of seeds from the same pack and they can all display different traits, smell, growth, structure, color, cannabinoid content. It could all be different amongst those different seeds. And this is due to generic genetic variability. So um, really it's influenced by both genotype and environment. So we want to get deeper into uh, genotype, right? Because a lot of people are like, well, what are what is genotype? You're talking about phenotype, genotype. Genotype's really the genetic makeup of that plant, of that entire organism, the complete set of DNA instructions from its parents. So for example, it's like the entire range of traits that you could potentially get from that plant. Now, uh, what's gonna what you're actually gonna get from it is gonna determine on your environment. I think that's kind of a rough way to explain. I don't know if you guys have anything to add to that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the biggest thing is when you look at traits that come from the parents, the great grandparents, we're we're dealing with polyhybrids, things that have been crossbred so many times. So it's 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 tough and that argument comes in with genotypes, I feel, when people will say sometimes we're discussing a genotype versus a phenotype. So in some cases, when we're talking about the chemical compounds, you know, terpenes and flavonoids and these certain things, it's going to vary between, you know, different seeds that you pop. It's going to vary depending on what environment it's grown in and, you know, talking like the light spectrum, the food, the intensity of the light and everything. So I feel the environmental impact is where you'll see the phenotypical expressions. Genotypes, that's just, that's the genetics, what it is. That's not going to change whether I have it or you have it. However, you look at someone growing, let's say, Chillout OG, for example, when pigeons grew it, he had very similar flavor, totally different look. Why was that? Environmental impact. He has a colder basement. He has different temperatures, you know, fluctuation in comparison to us, especially you, Chris. So he's going to see different expressions, but also, also those garden naked. And he so gar yeah, they see that. pale blue. Yeah. You give them some Sorry. blue balls, you blue know, balls. it happens. It happens. I think when you see that, it makes people get tripped up and they're like, oh, well, that's just the strain. That's just the way it grows. And it's like, yeah, well, it's also the environmental impact. And that's where sometimes selecting these genetics is tough because one pheno may do very well for somebody else, but it may not do very well for you in your environment. So getting a cut or a clone from somebody of a particular phenotype may not do as well as hunting that pheno yourself because you can find something that works for you and your environment and your style of growing. Also, you can get the genotype, you know, the genetics that you know you're looking for. So you can, that, that pheno hunting is crucial, I feel. And if you don't do that, you wind up getting something that maybe you didn't order, you know, that, that you th thought you ordered, but it's not, it's not what you wanted. We run in daycare? Yes, I, I have a daycare back? in the back. It's good. FTSD. I just wanted to make notes. So if anyone's summertime, this, yeah, like summertime daycare. If you're listening, um, I now my house has become the cool house, which is great. I've got my kids and a gang of other kids that told I was filming, so I'm gonna have to close my door. Just I just like to keep an eye on them. Smart is smart, isn't it? Smart, cool. smart. What were you gonna say, Chris? You're gonna add to that. Yeah, well, I was just going to talk about how pheno hunting really is kind of like a treasure hunt in a way, right? Some growers are chasing the, quote, unicorn cut, right? They're looking for this special combination of characteristics within the genotype. They're looking for that to express in the phenotype that they're growing. Uh, but, you know, a lot of folks, home growers, I say, are starting with like a 10-pack, 10-pack, 20-pack. Now there is a debate on, okay... What is a true pheno hunt? Can you pheno hunt through five? Can you pheno hunt through 10? Some people say, no, you got to pheno hunt a hundred different seeds in order to do a true pheno hunt. I think that's all subjective. I think, uh, you know, we don't want the, um, the small home growers to get discouraged. I've totally done pheno hunts with 10 packs. Uh, I have only had five seeds, planted them all. And hey, what can I get out of this? Right. Not taking anything serious, just doing something for me, not really doing things that are widespread. So don't want to have this kind of deter some of the new folks away uh, because you can certainly just pop like a 10 pack, visibly see the differences and characteristics as they're growing, and then kind of make your selection from there according to what you want. Really, in the end of it, it comes down to you, the grower, the breeder, whatever. It comes down to what you want, what you're looking for. It's up to you to determine that and then select accordingly.
I think that's the big thing too, is people don't realize that pheno hunting, the best way is with a thousand plants for sure. But pheno hunting, I could have two plants and decide which one's better. I'm still hunting between two phenos. It's the stupidest shit. There's a lot of big headed growers, man, that really deter uh, and, and really push people away from pheno hunting, it seems. I think too, it's like a lot of these people are dealing with much larger operations. When we're talking pheno hunting uh, on like a commercial scale, if anyone's even doing that, uh, yeah, sure, maybe. If you have the opportunity to run a room with three, four, five hundred plants and to check the variabilities between them all, variables between them all, then sure, that's great. But you said it, you can have two different beans and then find which one's different between the two of them and consider that a hunt. Well, like because... remember the hunt? No, it's no. Completely oh yeah, gone. I was no. wiped off the internet. But those, uh, they had four or five fields, separate whole farms that were hunting through genetics. This is thousands of seeds, right. you know. So, but I think depends. what, like I, like you said though, I think it's important to not discourage the home grower because it is important to let, you know, it, it, it's like science in a, it's it is science in its own way. It's like uh, someone's technique is is specific to them and should still be included as long as they've followed the appropriate steps to to document and so on and so forth and to, to come to the right conclusion so i think you know a, a couple I, I think five to but then again it's like I, I would say five to ten i think is a good idea but then again if you have a if you're in an area where you have a restriction to four plants well four is your number then uh, if you're going to try to work with it so i could see the argument with more because obviously with more beans, more plants, you're going to have more variations, more potential to have that more unicorns or that very special unicorn. And yeah, I can see that argument too. But I think, I, I, I don't think you should be able to diminish any, or to take anything away from someone who's pheno hunting with five to 10. This FTS clip was brought to you by AC Infinity, leaders in garden innovation. Use discount code thestash15 at checkout to save some money on your order. From the Stash Podcast.